it's time for a new art project. I'm really excited about this project that I have for you these um, next couple weeks. I have been working with some young five classes and we've been studying folk art from Mexico. And the project that I'm working on with them is very similar to this one. And this is our folk art bird project that you and I are going to work on together for the next couple of weeks. Now, um, we're going to talk a little bit about what folk art is and look at some examples from both Mexico and some other countries. And then we're going to go ahead and get started in creating our little birds and putting all the fun patterns on. We will be doing that on white paper and then eventually cutting those out and stacking them up in a whole variety of ways and gluing them to a dark background and then we'll put their legs on. The supplies that you are going to need for this art project today are the white sheet of paper that I sent home, a pencil, and then I would suggest both of your Sharpie markers, both your fine point and your ultra fine. And you probably want to have an eraser as well. I've got a couple other um, black markers that I like to use, but you could use your Crayola or just these. These will all work out perfect. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started creating our own folk art, I just wanted to show you some examples of folk art from a variety of other cultures and countries, what that looks like. Folk art is a kind of art that means art made by the people of a particular area, country, or culture. Now, each country has their own style or type of folk art. It tends to be designs or patterns that are usually are fairly simplified, oftentimes lots of bright colors. So uh, here is a blue and white image of um, folk art from Scandinavia. And as you can see, we've got, um, it's a symmetrical piece of art. That means that it's the same on both sides. And it's a pattern. It's filled with all sorts of flowers and leaves and swirls and birds. And you can see that none of this is realistic. It's just very fun. Stylized. Folk art tends to be, like I said, simplified and decorative. The next piece I want to show you, this is uh, some Swedish folk art. You can see this one includes color, not just blue and white. And then also we have some animals included. We have these horses. Um, but again, you can see it's symmetrical, the same on both sides. If you folded it in half, you would see that it repeats on both sides. Now, I was specifically looking at Mexican folk art, and those were the kinds of colors and the styles that um, I've been working with. And that's what we want to focus on for the rest of our time of looking at folk art. This is an example of Mexican folk art. This is symmetrical as well. It's the same on both sides. And again, you can see um, it's very colorful, and it's a lot of florals and leaves and patterns, but it's very similar to the folk art that I just showed you from the Scandinavian region um, and specifically uh, Sweden. This next piece is a Mexican poster from the 1930s, and you can see how um, that style of decoration was used in advertising. And it's symmetrical again, and we've got animals included and birds. I specifically want you to notice the birds at the top and the little sheep down at the bottom. And we have figures of people included as well. And again, the fun floral pattern. Now, folk art was not only done on posters and painted um, on flat pieces of material. Uh, oftentimes it would have been put on bark, as you can see in this bird drawing or painting. This is not symmetrical, but again, it has lots of those patterns. 
And this was often done and still is done on thin layers of bark from tree. Now you can see that it um, is painted as well. This is Mexican um, pottery that has a folk art style with patterns that are repetitive. And again, all of those fun flat shapes. And then the last uh, piece of folk art I wanted to show you, and you can see this is from a little um, store where you could buy textiles uh, from the town. But this animal that we have in front of us is made out of wood, but it is covered in folk art designed beadwork. And so that same kind of fun pattern and repetitive symmetrical design it was not only painted and printed, but it also was done and used in their beading. So this folk art is what is going to inspire us as we work on our animals. We are going to be adding lots of patterns and um, creating the shape of the animals that it doesn't have to look realistic, it can be fun and whimsical. All right, Molly, so the first thing that we want to do is to work on the outside body shapes of our birds. And I just wanna show you kind of the, mind you what these look like. We are going to um, primarily be making them all have kind of this U-shaped, um, bottom part of their body, but the top will vary. So this one, kind of think of this one like the sausage bird. Um, and this one has lots of big feathers. But these are real simple. So we'll probably start with birds that are kind of like this. And um, and so this is this is actually very similar to this one in shape. And we've got kind of one ordinary little bird. I do really like our ones with the long necks, so we'll make a couple of those. So we're gonna work on the different shaped birds this week, and then next week we'll work on um, the color for them. So I want you to feel free to pause this video at any time if the bird is, the drawings that I'm doing feel like they're going too fast. We're going to start by making one of those simple birds. So I want you to go ahead and kind of make like a half circle. And from there, we're going to go ahead and do a straight line that comes out the back. And then we're going to do that U shape that we had. And like I told uh, my young fives, you can do something fancy and put some zigzag lines here. You could do it like that or you um, can do it kind of more wavy and have them come down farther. We are not going to worry about the legs because the legs are going to be drawn on our dark paper. The next thing you're going to want to do is to put a triangle for the beak. And as soon as you put that triangle, triangle in, you can really see that bird and how that bird is going to turn out. You put a little dot in there, and I'm not going to worry about that too much because, of course, we're going to go over that with black marker. So for this one, I'm going to do, for the wing, I'm going to do kind of like the letter C or the letter U to the side, however you... Then we're going to do that fancy edge that's going to come down, so a wavy line, and then we'll just connect it here. So that's our first bird, pretty pretty simple and not, not too challenging. I wanna do this um, same kind of bird again, but I'm going to um, make a little bit smaller head. I want you to think about these birds um, having slightly different shapes and sizes so that when we stack them on top of each other, we have some small, medium, and large. So I got that triangle in again. I'm gonna put the eye. This wing, I'll do a straight line. We'll kind of bring that down. And you can do any kind of ruffly edge that you might want. This one looks kind of chicken-like to me. It doesn't matter what order you do these birds in because um, we just want to fit in as many as we can. So I think we'll just do one more kind of in this um, shape. 
this one I'm going to do kind of a curved, this curved head. This is going to be a little bit bigger of a head. But again, that line, you can do your birds any way that you want. So if you don't want to do them quite like this, you can, you can do them whatever way you want. Okay, now I'm going to do one with a long neck. And we're going to start by making this curved shape. I'm going to go ahead and add an end to it that part of the line and I'm going to put my triangle in for the beak and that way you can kind of tell what we're drawing right away so it'll make more sense and we're just going to bring another curved line that follows this one so what seems like it might be hard isn't too bad now we're just going to do another curved line and we're going to go from here up to here and we're just going to have this be a curved line. So it's kind of like a little bulb and then we've got our head. I'm going to take this line out and make it into part of a tail. Give it some extra feathers. And we'll go ahead and put um, wings on here. And there you have that one. I think these are a lot of fun doing the ones with kind of the longer necks. So I, I'm going to do another one over here. Let's see if I can get it to go the other way. So we'll do our curved line. And then that rounded part again. And if that happens, that's why we're using pencil. You can just erase it and fix it, adjust it. So you can see, just practicing a little. There we go. That's a little better. That's less awkward. And then we would put in fancy little wing. And so they're looking at each other, but we're going to cut them out so it doesn't really... Like I said, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I want to do um, a really big bird with a tiny little head. So we'll do um, this curved line, and we're going to come straight down. So it's like a big boat. And I'm going to connect this to here. So we'll kind of flow like that. We're going to have feathers tail feathers coming out. It's a fancy bird. And we'll put our beak on. And again, our eyes. And the wings. So that's really nice. I like that. So you can see that I have used up, you can see the edges of my paper. I've got quite a bit of space still left, um, but if you have your drawing and you're thinking, man, I could maybe fit like a little bird here or a bird here, you can turn your paper around. I'm going to fit a bird right here because we aren't putting legs on and we're just going to be cutting them out. So it, it doesn't really matter. So I've got this swoop. That's going to be the back. And... I kind of put that beak on when I was drawing the swoop of the body. I think I'm going to want to bring that down even more. So like I said before, you can erase and just adjust. These wings I'm making really long to go with the rest of the body, as you can see. I'm going to fit a little guy right down here and again just kind of like a rounded half circle kind of a straight back just bring that on up and put feathers on the back you put that triangle in and now we know exactly where the face is and we're going to kind of repeat that shape for the wings so so many fun 
folk art birds. I'm going to make that long, that one that I said is kind of like a sausage. I'm going to make that one next. I'm doing um, a half circle. And we'll come around like this. And we're going to have its tail come up. do a round head, kind of a rounded back with the tail that curls up. I have enough room to fit at least one more in here. It. So there are a couple other spaces where I can fit some more birds in and as I trace these with my black sharpie marker I might decide to fit one or two in. So once you have your paper filled with lots of fun birds then we're going to go ahead and we are going to trace them. My suggestion is I'm going to start with my fine, my sharpie fine marker which is a little bit bigger and I'm going to use that to trace the body. If there's any part of the body that you don't like, this is your chance to erase it and fix it or to choose not to trace that part of the body. So you can see I didn't catch all the lines. I just put some on and I can erase those pencil lines that are left over. The fun thing about these folk art birds is that they're whimsical, meaning that they are um, friendly and um, imaginative and decorative. So I hope you have fun experimenting with them. Turn on some nice music and go ahead and trace all the birds that you have made. There you have it. All of our um, folk art birds that are going to be ready for adding lots of decoration and patterns to. So if you need to take a break at any point during this, you can easily come back to this later. You don't have to finish it uh, in one sitting. I'm just going in with my eraser, my really big one, and I'm erasing all of the pencil lines and marks that aren't covered by the marker. Some of them I traced really well and some of them I kind of changed the shapes a little bit. So I just want to go in and erase. All right, it's important that you erase all those extra lines so that they don't get in your way when we put our patterns in. So this is all that we're gonna do for this week. I hope you have lots of fun drawing birds. I still have room for a couple more, which I might fit in later on. So um, create as many birds as you can fit on your paper, and we'll be cutting those out later after we have a chance to color them next week. I hope you've had a lot of fun, and I look forward to um, seeing you uh, and your projects and your birds. So post those on Seesaw so I can see how it's going.